Make sure you guys are doing the attendance form. You only need to do the attendance form once per day. Jerry, you already did your attendance? It's loading. Slow? Okay. I purposely made today's assignment super short so that you can get caught up on your work because I want you guys to be passing by Friday. If you're not passing on Friday, and I'm not grading stuff on Friday, so it needs to be in before that. You guys need to have your stuff in today. If you're not passing, then I'm going to be calling home. You want to make sure that you guys have your work in. Okay, once you're done with attendance, today's assignment is so easy. We're just going to break it down. So there's a bunch of different types of tax forms. So the most common one for you guys, basically if you're under 25, you're probably going to use the 1040 easy, which is this form right here. So you're just going to click on it. This is your form, okay? We're going to fill this out together. Then if you don't have a W-2, we're going to use this as our W-2. So if you have your own W-2 that you want to use, we can absolutely do that. But let's break this down. What, how much did they make in their, how much did they make total this year? Yeah, 98,000. This is how much was kept for their, oh, well, let me, I was trying to highlight. This is how much was kept for their federal income tax. That's the most they could possibly get back. It depends on what tax bracket you're in. Can they get their Social Security back? No. Can they get their Medicaid back? No. No. So this much, they're not going to see ever again. This, they could get part of it back based off of all the different factors. So what we're going to do is we're just going to break this down and put this over here. So this isn't going to let me, is it going to let me type in it? It is. We're just going to fill it out. Pretty simple. Okay. So if we look at this, what's the name of the person? What's the person's name? Tom T. Taxpayer. So you just put Tom T. Taxpayer. So far, so good. Now for all the other information, we're going to pretend like it's you. Like if they want to know if you're single, married, kids, and all that stuff, we're going to pretend it's you. Follow? Social security number. Don't use your social security number. That is a very big way to get identity fraud. I'm not going to be stealing your ID number, but if you put it on this document, you're going to have to save the document and you your account could get hacked and they could steal your information. You follow? We don't want your social security number. So instead, go to the picture. This is the employers and this is the employees. So they're we're, um, we're, we're going to pretend that their social security number is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Easy. Are any of you married? <laughs> Maybe some. <laughs> wow, wow. Just to remind you, I am recording. <laughs> wow, y'all. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I have a joke. I have a joke for Jordan. Is it an appropriate joke? Yes. <laughs> okay, let me just hit pause on this. All right, it should be pretty simple, but this is their this is their address. So the person's address, four five six Road Street, anywhere USA one two three four five. So home address. Notice it's not going to have everything right here. So it's going to be four five six. Road Street, this is where the town goes. So the town was anywhere, right? And then zip code was one, two, three, four, five. Now, obviously this is made up information. You would put your actual information. Now, 
sometimes people are out of the United States, but they still have to pay taxes. So, for example, if I, um, what is that? Oh. Um, if, uh, <laughs> if I paid, if, if I was in another country right now, like or, um, I have friends who went on a semester abroad in college, they would have to list their address where they were currently living, and that could be out of the country. Okay, now let's break down. We don't have a spouse, okay. Now we're going to break down each one of these lines. Wage, salaries, and tips. This should be box one of your W-2 form. They tell you which box, like they tried to make it pretty simple. So if I'm looking here, do you see box one? Nine, eight, five, that, 500. That's it. That's all we're gonna put right here. 98, 500. Taxable interest. Now, here's the deal. Most of us don't make that much interest. I make like $3 in interest every year. So as long as you um, have less than $1,500, you're good. So you find this by looking at your bank statements. So right now, we're going to just pretend we don't have one. So we're going to say zero. Unemployment compensation, we're going to pretend zero because you guys would not get unemployment because you're too young. You get unemployment when you've had a job and you've lost your job unexpectedly and you have to um, still pay your bills, but you had to have been employed full time. You guys are in school, so it's not really possible for you to have a full time job right now. Okay, we're going to add... We just add up all of these lines together and that's your adjusted gross income. Remember, gross is what you pay taxes on. So we have nothing to add to line one, so what are we gonna put here? Exactly. 98,500 is what he said. Now this side of the line is dollars, this side is cents. Okay. If someone can claim you, you don't have a spouse, as a dependent, check the applicable box below and enter the amount from the worksheet on the back. Okay. So what does a dependent mean? Okay. So are you dependent on anyone? Who? Your parents, right? Now your parents get a tax write-off for having kids because kids are expensive. So if you still live at home with your parents, you are being claimed as a dependent. So you click you. Now we're gonna have to come back to line five after we do the worksheet on the back. So we're gonna scroll down to the worksheet on the back. OMG, look at all of those things. Yep, so let's break it down. I gotta I gotta zoom out. I can't I can't see. Your filings okay, so use this form if your filing status is single or married jointly. You and your spouse, we don't have spouse, you cannot claim any dependents, that's you. Can't claim dependents. We have less than a hundred thousand. Blah 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 blah. Okay, use this worksheet to figure out the amount to enter on line five if someone can claim you as a dependent, even if that person chooses not to. Find out if someone can claim you as a dependent, then they give you a long list. Basically, you guys are all dependents right now because you live at home with your family, correct? Okay, if you lived at home with your family for any part of 2020, you're a dependent. So what we're going to do? If any from line one on front. Amount, if any from line one. Okay, so we gotta go back to line one. Line one, okay, so this is how much you made, right? The 98,500. So we're gonna enter that onto our worksheet. Line one. 
98,500. Now, I mean, that's making some pretty good money for y'all as a, as a dependent. B, minimum standard deduction. Enter the larger of A or B here. That's A. So whichever one's bigger, right? Maximum standard deduction if single is 6,350. If married, 1,200, sorry, 12,700. Enter C or D, whichever one's smaller. Okay, so what we're looking at, are you single or are you married? Single, so we're gonna use a 6,350. You following me? And then it's telling me, I'm gonna use whichever number's smaller. Which number's smaller, C or D? That's the deduction we can take, 6350. That's going to be the number we're going to go put on line 5 on the front in just a minute. Exemption amount, if single, enter 0. G, add lines E and F, and it goes here. So what's 6350 plus 0? Exactly. And then it says to go put this on line five on the front. You following me? So it's telling you step by step what to do. This is the easiest tax form by a lot. And this is probably what you'll need to do for the first seven, eight years of working. But once you start making, um, once you start making a little bit more, like in the 50 plus thousand range, then there starts to be some tax advantages to doing other things. We'll talk. Okay, so this 6350, we're gonna come back to the first page, and this is going here. 6350. What does line six tell me to do? Okay. Do it. Don't tell us the answer. When you got the answer, give me a thumbs up. Thank you. So right now you should be doing 98 500 take away 6350 and you should be writing the number right here on line number six okay sosa what did you get for line number six torres did you do it yet What, what other thing, babe? <laughs> yeah. You know, man, so where's that thing that where it like tells the name or said com or something? Or com or something? This thingy? Yeah, yeah. Right here. It's right here in the assignment. In the directions. Okay, you guys. Hey guys, listen. So the gross, their gross was actually 100,000. You following me? But they didn't get taxed on, um, so they took these taxes out so they wouldn't be taxed on those. So this is what they were taxed on for their federal income tax. So that's the amount they were taxed on for federal income tax. And then this is just a standard deduction. So a standard deduction just means what they did is instead of you making a list of ever, however much sales tax you spent that year, can you imagine keeping every receipt on everything you ever bought and then adding up all the tax for the entire year? Doesn't that sound horrible? Yeah, so they just did an average. So this is like the average, 6350 is the average 
of what single one person would spend on like sales tax and other very basic deductions through a year so that you didn't have to keep track of it. They just said, you can use this amount. Now, if you want to keep track of it, you can use that instead, but it's a real pain in the butt. Okay, we're going to go to line seven. Come in. It's not locked, dude. All right, guys. So now we're going to look how much income tax is withheld. So now we're gonna go back to your W-2. How much income tax did the government keep? Income tax that's withheld. 6,000, no, 1,500. 1,500, exactly. He was adding these two. Whoa, whoa. Okay, I did something wrong. Can anybody tell me what I did wrong? Yep, common mistake. Earned income, C instructions, EIC. Okay, so now we've got to find the instructions for the EIC. It's usually on the back, so if you scroll down, let's see if we can find anything about the EIC. Control find EIC. Um, yeah, just telling me. Come in. Hi, who are you? Who are you? Oh, Miriam. Come in. <laughs> just take a seat anywhere. So guys, I read about it online, and because you're claimed as a dependent, you can't have an EIC. So you can't have any kind of earned income, so it's just going to be, I mean, earned income credit, so it's a zero there. You can. Okay, non-taxable combat pay election. Am I reading that right? Non-taxable combat pay election. Well, what do you think combat pay is for? Are you in the military? So do you have any combat pay? Good job. Number nine, what does it tell us to do? What does number nine tell us to do? Nine, seven, eight. Okay, so what does that make? Uh huh. Nine, number ten. What does it tell us to do? Okay, we're gonna come back to number ten. Number eleven. Did you have health insurance? Probably through your parents, right? Yes. So you're going to say full year coverage. And you didn't pay anything. We're going to come back to line 10. Use the amount from line 6 to determine your tax and the tax table on the instructions. Am I supposed to have a tax table? Because I don't see a tax table. Do you see a tax table? No. Okay. Let me see if we can find us a tax table. <coughs> Easy. Tax table. I don't want to. 25 pages? That's too much. Okay, I'm going to pull this to my screen just because I can't read. Actually. Okay, here we go. Wow, that's a lot. So this is a huge tax table. And how, guys, what was our line 10? Oh, not line 10. What was our line? Use the amount on line 6 to find your tax 
Mm -hmm. Line six. So we have 92, 150. So we have to go to this darn long table. This is 5,000, 8,000, 11,000. We're going a long way, right? What was it? 92? 92 what? Okay, so 92, 150 right here. That's a lot, huh? <coughs> I need a little water. Okay, now that we found it on the table, what do the instructions tell us to do? Tax of the tax table, okay. So we found the tax table, but I don't know what these different columns mean. So do we have to go to the very top to find out what those columns mean? Um, of course. Oh, here we go, single. The first one's single, right? So that's us. So it's 16, 190. 16,190. That's gonna go on the table right there, okay? 16,190. Mm -hmm. 16,190. 90. You guys following? All right, guys, you with me? What does it tell us to do for number 12? Okay, what does that make? So 16,190. Good. What does 13A tell us to do? If my mark is larger than 12, subtract so one from my Okay, so which one's bigger? No. So are we going to need to subtract them? Yes. No. Only if 9 was bigger. Remember, 9 is how much you've already paid, and 12 is how much total you owe. Like, that's how much you need to pay total. So are you getting money back? No. How much are you going to have to pay? How are we going to figure, what's the difference? We're going to go to 14, y'all. 14. Now, if it is, you're going to need to do, if you are getting a refund, which most of you should be, because you guys are young and you don't make that much money, the routing number you can get for your bank, and they'll send the money directly to your account. And you just tell them routing number, which type of account, and then your account number. Okay, so since 12 is bigger than 9, you just subtract them. What's 12 take away 9? Well, I mean, 16, 190 minus 1,500. Now I'll subtract 16,190. 16,190 take away 1,500. Mm -hmm. That's how much you're going to have to pay in taxes on top of what you've already paid. You guys with me? See how it tells you step by step what to do? Okay. Do you want to allow another person to talk to the IRS about your stuff? Usually, no. Now, if you have someone in your family who is like a CPA or some other uh, like accountant type person and they know stuff, you can say yes and then they can discuss the more technical stuff with that person who can then explain it to you. Okay, then you have to, sir, um, you have to sign it, you have to date it. So we're gonna, you can't, it won't let you sign on the form, but your occupation right now is student or if you guys have an actual job, let's take a look at what this guy's job was. Uh, top company, yeah, nope, not helpful, right? So let's, what's your actual jobs right now? Does anybody have a job? What's your job? H-E-B cashier? Uh, yeah. H-E-B. 
phone number, 555, make it what you want. Now this part you don't usually fill out because you guys are going to do this yourself. What does it mean? What does it mean to have a preparer's name? What does it mean if someone prepared your taxes for you? Somebody did your taxes. So they would put, whoever did your taxes puts their name there and they sign and all of that stuff. But did you do any of that? No. You are done. You want to make sure can you change this name to your name, your first and last name? Yeah. So that way when you submit it, I know whose it is. Mm -hmm. And then just, you're going to download it. Please make sure you're downloading it as a PDF. You're going to say save. And then on the assignment, it won't let me because I'm... I own it, but submit the assignment, y'all. Now, there's a ton of you who haven't done all the assignments. You're going to need to start at the beginning and go to the end. So just go ahead and submit the assignment. You have about an hour of class left, so let's get something done, please. Whatever you want, I would call it the 1040 easy.